Paul put the team on one of his secret spots in search of bigger doggies, and once again, they were greeted by a few large silver tips. A good sign that this spot was holding fish. keeping the bonnie away from the sharks to allow the doggies up was a challenge, as always. But they soon had one of the largest fish of the trip gunning for the bonnie. Niall had been patient throughout the trip and his turn was finally up to put a spear in a good fish. Heartbreak as this fish around 60 kilos broke free, the dog tooth tuna getting the better of the team. Luckily, there was soon another large doggy hunting the bonnie, and Chris had the fish of a lifetime in sight. In the world of spearfishing, nothing compares to the first run of a dog tooth tuna. The power of this fish is literally breathtaking and could easily drown the most experienced diver if caught in the line. This solid shot doggy taking down two, three atmosphere floats beyond 30 meters. of the final day, Paul and Coatsman delivered the fish of the trip. A solid shot, followed by an exhausting battle, had landed Chris a fish of a lifetime. One fifty-one. Woohoo! Nice fish. Well done, Chris. The male grows a lot slower, so then he's, a, he's been around the block a lot longer. So, i.e. he gets hooked a lot more and his, his face is a bit more gnarly. I know he's got a lot of older looking face as opposed to the females that grow a lot faster. But I've got a good idea that it's probably sitting on the 50 kilo mark. You can see he's been hooked once or twice. There we go. Those are all lines from the line running across him and then obviously breaking off the tension. 50. Yeah. 55. Yeah, 50 something. It's too heavy for this girl. <laughs> Seven, eight days of hard work to get this fish. Whew, dived so many dives, eh? Literally probably 500 dives. So when this thing materialized from nowhere, I couldn't believe it. And I shot it here, it's not the right place, you really want to shoot it here. But I got a good holding shot of shot, then that thing pulled us. Eh? Flight down, second flight down, 
big battle. Niall came in, helped me pull like anything. We got the float back float clipped on, pulled it up through the cleating system, got that up to the surface, and Chris swam down and gave the kill shot. They're the hardest fish in the sea to land, and I got my ticket. So, happy days. Woo. And Niall helped me. Thanks, brother. Yeah, it's a pleasure, mate. Yeah, pleasure. geez, we're here to help each other, and we've had an awesome time. Madagascar and Castor Bank truly delivered for the Spear Junkies team. Heading towards land, witnessing the breathtaking sunset, the team reflected on what had been an unbelievable experience. With a day to spare before heading home, the team ventured into Hellville, the capital of Nosy B hoping to pick up some of the spices and delicacies for which the island is famous. So we're here in Hellville, a bit of an unfortunate name. It's hot as hell and the land's feeling a bit strange, uh, still rocking a bit. But uh, yeah, we just wanted to come look at the local market. Uh, they're famous for their pepper in Madagascar. Also beautiful vanilla they grow here, so we want to buy a bit of vanilla, a bit of pepper, take it home. This is a 40,000 ariyar. 60,000 for two. Uh, two. <laughs> There's some logic there. So Jacques is our guide today. He works with uh, Pauli and uh, yeah, he can use the fixer here in Madagascar. So he can fix anything that goes wrong. <laughs> and he also knows everyone. So when you travel around with Jacques, you get the VIP treatment. Eh? Not sure you get the best price in vanilla. Bit of, bit of pepper. I like the, the, the pepper to buy. Fragrances here. Oh, this is cocoa. Cocoa beans. Thank you very much. Merci eh? beaucoup. <laughs> There's the fountain that works. When we first arrived, we were, was it working? But we were told it's a working fountain. We are in Hellville now. We need to get out of Hellville to go to the Chinese supermarkets where we can find uh, the coffee and chocolate. In Uzebi, we, we have a Ilang Ilang factory. That is a, the basic of a perfume that we make in Uzebi also. Madagascan chocolate is the best. And I've got orders from everyone. Because last time I came back from Madagascar, <laughs> I brought it and they were like, bring lots, so. Uh, welcome to Le Marie Land Park. Thank you. So, my name is Emmanuel. Okay, from here, we're gonna do the lemurs first. But in the park, we can see many things like giant turtles of Seychelles. There is uh, Napoleon, Bonaparte, and Josephine. <laughs> Napoleon is 280 years old. Good. And, uh, after that, we can see many kinds of lemurs. The other are in a cage. The other we're gonna see in the forest. And we can see also the snake like a triboa boa constrictor and a big chameleon, Kaluma Parsoni. Of course, no trip to Madagascar is complete without visiting some of the wonderfully unique animals found on the island. Everyone's coming. Hey, Pong's a bit. Didn't have a shower this morning. Hey! <laughs> Grab the whole banana! King Julian says do not touch her defeat. Do not, do not touch her defeat. So we're coming to the end of our trip to Madagascar. Um, it's been an absolutely awesome trip. We're here at Lima Land today. Uh, that was a real treat for us on our last day. We fly home tonight, and it's with a certain amount of sadness every trip ends. But uh, in Spear Junkies, we obviously have the goal of trying to get as many ticks as possible on the back of our t-shirts. Uh, we understand that the ticks are just part of it, you know. What is really important is being with good friends yeah, true. and the journey along the way. So, yeah, we feel very privileged to have had this Madagascar experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, I managed to get three ticks, which really exceeded my wildest expectations. I got a 53 kilogram dog tooth tuna, a 31 kilogram sailfish, 
and a 27 kilogram GT for John Trevelli. So, I mean, those are just uh, fish of a lifetime, three of them. So, and uh, well we're fortunate enough for Potty to get his tick on the selfish. So, well done, Potty. Thanks, Chris. Good one, mate. Thanks, Nile. And now <laughs> to you. Although he didn't manage to get that tick, he did manage to put a spear into a really large doggy, yeah. over 60 kilograms. We fought it for quite a while. It really pulled all the floats under. Yeah. Had a massive struggle, but you know, the fish just wasn't yours. So maybe yeah. next year. Yeah, so it's with a heavy heart. We've come to the end of our trip to Madagascar. It's been absolutely awesome. But uh, this trip couldn't have been possible if it wasn't for Chris Coates. Well, we call him Coatesman. Well done, Coatesman. <laughs> Probably the best spearfishing guide That's in the it. world. Apart from Mozambique, Madagascar is his backyard. Uh, we've done several trips with him this year and had a really, really special time. But yeah, he knows how to get the dog tooth tuna here. He really has a good understanding of how to get those fish up off the bottom. And they taught us so much. So yeah, Chris, thanks for sharing your backyard with us. And uh, it was absolute really pleasure. brilliant. Uh, so yeah. thanks, mate. Yeah. Well done. Uh. It's been an job. absolute pleasure having you guys. Yeah. I'll wait for Thank more you. adventures. Thank, you, Chris. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, guys. What a good trip. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching these videos as much as we enjoyed making them. Here's a playlist over here with some more of the Spear Junkies videos in them. Please subscribe so you catch the next ones as they come out and hit us up a like. It really does help with Google. Thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.